We now turn to drones. They're being used. They are the stuff of science fiction, but they've become a key weapon overseas in the hunt for terrorists. Now they are coming here. In February, President Obama signed a bill that opens U.S. airspace to thousands of these unmanned aircraft. Jeff Glor has been looking into it for us, and he joins us with more. Jeff, good morning. Erica, good morning to you. Drones right now are where personal computers were in the early 80s, improving at an extraordinary pace, about to become part of our everyday lives. The question is, are we ready? They come in just about any size you want, as large as a passenger plane, as small as a hummingbird. Unmanned aerial vehicles, or as most people know them, drones. There's no stopping this technology. Anyone who thinks they can put this genie back in the box, that's silliness. Peter Singer, a military expert and perhaps the country's foremost authority on drones, has watched them dramatically alter the American battlefield overseas. And he says they're about to become the next big thing at home. They're technologies that not only give you capabilities that you couldn't have imagined a generation earlier, but they're also technologies that cause questions that you weren't asking yourself a generation earlier. This is Lakota, North Dakota, sparsely populated, but now heavily debated because this is the first known site where a drone was used domestically to help arrest a U.S. citizen. It's the case of Rodney Brossart, a rancher accused of refusing to return a herd of cows that wandered onto his land. When police tried to move in, the family allegedly greeted them with loaded weapons. You think this was an easy call? So Sergeant Bill Mackey, who runs the SWAT team at nearby Grand Forks, called in the reinforcements, specifically a Predator drone, a massive aircraft that up until now most people associate with Hellfire missiles and terrorist strikes. This was a dispute over cattle and a Predator drone was called in. Too much? Well, I can't really get into uh, what the dispute was over. Uh, what I can tell you is the SWAT team wasn't uh, there over a property dispute. Uh, the SWAT team was called out uh, to render assistance, uh, reference armed subjects, and uh, using the uh, unmanned aerial vehicle uh, seemed appropriate in this instance. Broussard's lawyer is looking at challenging the drone use, a potential test case for the rest of the country, because the rest of the country is about to get a lot more of them. Everyone wants an eye in the sky. Real estate agents to view properties, farmers to find thirsty crops, energy companies to build pipelines, and local police departments want to launch neighborhood surveillance flights or find hard to catch criminals. You think the FAA was dragging its feet? Oh, no question about it, and that's why we acted. John Micah is chairman of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, which just passed legislation that the FAA estimates will put 10,000 drones in the sky by 2017. The catch? The issues involved with robotics, they go well beyond safety. Singer says that while the legislation did put in place rules to prevent drones from colliding with jets, it did little to clarify who can operate them and who can be watched. That drone is not just picking up information on, say, what's happening at that specific scene. It's picking up everything else that's going on. Basically, it's sort of recording footage from a lot of people that it didn't have their approval to record footage. You're sitting in your backyard in Florida <laughs> on a weekend. Yeah. You see a drone flying overhead. Does that concern you? Well, it might. Uh, not, uh, I, I think it'd be like everyone else uh, concerned about uh, aircraft um, coming uh, close to my uh, property uh, and invading it from above. Right now, yeah. should people be worried that Big Brother's coming to watch them? <laughs> well, um, there's always that uh, concern, but uh, there are means of uh, tracking uh, folks uh, through their cell phones, their computer usage. Uh, we live in a new age. This is where they get made. This is the factory. Aerovironment is where 90% of the military's small drones are made. And it's a factory floor we needed Defense Department clearance to enter. AV's next big market? Drones for local police departments. Does the average person understand how much these can see right now? The average person probably doesn't even realize that these small backpackable systems are used as extensively as they have been. They're assembled. Steve Gitlin gave us a tour and a rare infield demonstration. 
This is the Raven. How heavy is this? With that camera, it's about four and a half pounds. And four feet wide. What it lacks in size, it makes up for in camera quality. Okay, so we're just looking into this like this, right? Yeah. So you tell me yeah, how yeah. to operate this. Switch right here. Just steers the camera around wherever you want to look. You want to look left, you just cheat it a little bit to the left. So you can take a look and see some contents in the back of that truck. Huh. See inside the... It doesn't miss much, does it? It's, it's pretty good. People are going to use it for both good and bad. It's going to raise incredible new opportunities, but also incredible new challenges. Singer believes that for every local police department trying to keep people safe, a less well-intentioned operator may be tempted to use drones for no good. And right now, there is little preventing either side from doing whatever they want. Like it or not, unmanned systems are the future. Unfortunately, we're really not ready for them. And everything from our policies to our laws to the deep, deep ethical questions. This is one of those classic cases, good and bad. Uh, science will not be stopped, yep. but it it's won't be moving right. too fast. Yeah. I mean, as we said in the beginning, I mean, it's where personal computers were about 30 years ago, where the horseless carriage was in 1910. You know, nobody knew what was going to happen. We just knew it was going to happen. And the question is, as we said here, are we ready and how do we accommodate for what's about to happen? Beyond that, who gets them? Well, primarily at first, it's going to be local law enforcement. They want these because they want to spend, let's say, $50,000 on a drone instead of spending $50,000 on a cruiser. So they can help in some of these missions. And that is finding someone who might be missing, uh, an elderly person who wandered off, a criminal who might be hard to catch. That is likely up first. It's why there's so much more we want to ask yeah. you, but we're out of time. So. But the other, the other question here is, is that, you know, the, the person who wants to build it in their backyard, I mean, are they going to apply for a certificate of authorization with the FAA? I would think no. Just right. build it and put it up in the...